I don't know about you, but it just seems over the past four to five years, things have gone crazy in real estate or just, you know, I think maybe they've always been crazy, but just some major, major things have happened in the real estate industry that has allowed us real estate agents to pivot, has allowed brokerages to pivot. It has really, I would say, forced brokerages to pivot beyond that. So we have 2020, we have the pandemic. In 2021, 22, we have the rates dropping all time lows from a mortgage perspective. And then we have rates rapidly increasing a few years later. So here in the past four to five years, we've seen a good amount of change. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, one of the, one of the reasons is because we're about to go through the top 10 brokerages in the past four years from 2019 to 2023. And we're going to see how the brokerages moved, how they changed, how they adapted. And I really want to illustrate this particular or share this particular visual because one is super very well done by Real Trends and Housing Wire. But we're not going to see this type of visibility, at least um, here in the interim, because there's some aggregators like Real Trends and um, other other entities that compile this type of transaction volume, they're not going to make it as readily available any longer. One of the reasons is because of the NAR settlement. And with that NAR settlement, we have a lot of attorneys just looking at these lists as the call list. <laughs> That's their call list just to see which one had a $2 billion and above sales volume. So that's why some of these aggregators like Real Trends and others have decided to pause the publication of this. So we're not going to see these types of graphics for a little while. And, the, and beyond that, now that we have the post NAR settlement, now we have the life that we have to adjust to here. Another monumental change in real estate for us agents. Really, this top 10 is going to look radically different in three years, in five years. Why is that the case? Well, some of the models are going to become extinct. Well, some of the way that these agents, these brokerages are pivoting just aren't going to be, uh, aren't going to be viable. And some, some brokerages are not going to be able to catch up. So I think that's, um, I think that's, uh, it's going to, what you're going to see right here is going to be a good indicator of what we can expect. So we're going to go ahead and share the screen and see what we have. So here we have based off of, let's make sure we understand what we're looking at. We have brokerages in the top 10 buy sides from 2019 to 2023. Side equals one side of the transaction. There are two sides, buyer and seller per closed home sell. And then we have based off of the rankings from 2019 to 2020, 21, 22, 23. So we have four years worth of data. Now it lets you know where these these top 10 came from now as you could probably tell th this is not necessarily factoring in the entire keller williams um apparatus <laughs> so uh this is basically off of the brokerages more like uh, the franchises that they operate or the larger franchises but we're going to go through this either way all right so here we go we have right now, let's just go from top to bottom. EXP Realty right now is number one by size, by number of transactions. Where And you've seen in the past four years, it's been in a really good spot. It went from third in 2019, and then in 2000 and right around 2021 and 2022, it made the jump to number one. You see Anywhere, Anywhere Real Estate, which is a, a conglomerate, of several brokerages, you see them being consistently number two. So they haven't really, you know, dropped or increased. They've been consistently number two. You see Home Services of America, which was a long established number one, number one, number one, dropped to number three. So in other words, EXP and Home Services ended up inverting. Now Compass, you see Compass has been steady as well. It went from five to four. And right now, just just right now, actually, this uh, this past uh, 24 hours, they announced that they bought a mega brokerage with a hundred, well, not with a hundred, but hundreds of agents, which that's a huge add for them. Hanna Holdings, so it's Hanna Real Estate. That is here in our market. Hanna is non-existent. Um, the, I believe Hanna is more of a northeast type of product. I believe more uh, northeast type of brokerage, but they've been number four and dropped down to number five. And then we see out of nowhere, we see real brokers just get on get on the radar very quickly in 2022. And then 
balloon up to number six. Now, my prediction, just based off of some announcements that I've seen, based off of some of the conversations that I'm having, I believe in 2024, if this were, were to actually be published, which again, I don't necessarily think it's going to or not. I'm sorry, I don't necessarily think it's going to uh, be published in the very near future because of that NAR settlement and the um, we're not making it too easy for the attorneys to reach out. <laughs> Um, if this were to get published the following year, I believe real brokerage is going to get up into the top three pretty comfortably based off of the movement that we're seeing from other brokerages, other teams moving into real, including some teams within eXp Realty itself. I know I have some personal relationships that move their entire teams over. So I don't, I don't think they're going to struggle too much to crack to the top three in the event the, this rankings go out next year. Redfin has been consistently, but now it's dropped slightly. I, I'm curious to see post NAR settlement if this is gonna really, if this is going to, um, if this is going to help it or if it's going to hurt it. I feel like it's going to help it based off of how the model that Redfin has already established has been on a one percent type of a arrangement or a non six percent or what was quote unquote the standard according to the attorneys. Now we have United Real Estate. It you know it's. It had a it had a run up. It was number ten. Then it went up to what's well, been all over the place. So it's been down here, and then it cracked into the top. Uh, well, it didn't crack into the top five. It's number eight right now. All right. So Fathom Realty, same here. You've had a run up. HomeSmart, HomeSmart has had a run down. So it went from five, six, seven to number ten. Then we have properties. It's been, it's been going, it's been going. I believe properties is more of an online platform type of a deal. And again, Keller Williams here, this is the, um, this is not necessarily the entire brokerage because it's radically different than that. So here you have this particular network is on the decline, at least for this particular part. And then you have this West, West USA. I don't know about West USA Realty. And I also don't know about Cry Like. I don't know, but they've been number 10 and then are progressively going down. So I thought this was an interesting article, an interesting, interesting graph to visually see what brokerages are on the up and up, right? So the biggest rise or the biggest standout right here is real. Now I do expect some other brokerages that are on the cloud-based model to start topping the charts here moving forward. I fully expect that we're talking LPT, we're talking uh, Epic. We're talking about those types of brokerages that have gained steam here in the past year to two years. So I do expect them to start hitting the um, hitting the the top of charts. And it's going to be interesting to see if EXP Realty can retain its foothold um, now that it did reach number one for two years consecutively. But outside of that, let me know what you think about this particular graph. Is your brokerage representative here? If not, um, let me know which brokerage you're a part of. Talk soon.